Um, let me see. Don't seem to be able to hear you. This is my stuff. No, no. Um, never had this before. Um, yeah, you can cut, you can try guard and come back and see if it's. <laughs> Wasn't sure what was happening there. Um, yeah, it seems as if the um, sound did not work. So she's going to come back in, and hopefully it's going to work this time. Make an audio. Uh -huh. accent. Yes, Can I can you hear you. Oh, we are good. <laughs> Finally, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. Okay, yeah. let me make my video bigger. Hi. <laughs> yes, how do I pronounce your name? Laurel. Laurel. Okay. Yes. Well, excuse me and for how the... How do I pronounce your name? Namdi. Namdi. Okay. Yes. Lovely to meet you, Namdi. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, so, yeah, the, excuse me for the timing. Um, 90, I would say I've, I've probably interviewed 120 guests and 118 have been based in America. So <laughs> yourself and, uh, and Doris um, Pearson from High, uh, Five Star are the only two British <laughs> Oh, the only, the only the British ones. That, yeah. Only two that have been based in the UK, but um, okay. yeah, everyone else. So yeah, hence I normally this is yeah generally the <laughs> the time. But anyway, so yeah. when Jay sent his details, I I thought you, I thought you. I you think I was in America? Well, you sent a vi you posted a video that you were in Miami, and I thought, oh, okay, she's out in the states yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, I thought you actually were, were, you'd moved over there. You know, like LMA or something like that. So I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah. she's in the states, so this will work out." But he says, "No, you're we'll out be here. very soon. I'll be moving there, actually." Okay. Yeah. Well, before we get to the, um, we can start from the from the sort of beginning and stuff. And it's it's it is quite different for me because majority, well, as I said, all most of my acts are from the '90s. Most of the um, artists from the '90s, so they're they've already come out. A, you know, they've got their catalog and, and we're talking about how their successes and the highs and lows. Mm -hmm. With new artists, it's quite different because um, the industry has changed quite a bit from when I used to get into music. Um, it's a lot more people getting in. It's easier to get in. Yeah. It's harder yeah. to get discovered. But before we get to all of that, um, and so where are you sort of born, raised and, and, and stuff? Yeah, so I am born, I was actually born in Stevenage. Okay. We're not in London, outside of London. Okay. And then I came to London when I was about five, four years old okay. uh, with my mom. And I lived here all my life ever since. Okay. So now that you've, um, um, and I and, and a lot of people Stephen Age is it's uh, yeah, but northwest of uh, of London or something like that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Um, and and I'm, I probably will tie this later down because listening to is it move on um, your new single? Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, is that is it? Does it is am I detecting Afrobeats or what is it? Is, is there yeah. a different? Okay. It's a. It, we would say it's an Afrofusion. I wouldn't say it's all the way Afrobeat because yeah. it does have some elements of other genres. Yeah. So it's like different genres, but it's yeah different elements of Afrobeats with a fusion. Any heritage from Africa that that then would make you feel as if yes, this is, you know, it's like me playing singing reggae, but I've never been to the West Indies. So for yourself, any. I've never been to Africa. 
um would love to go i actually have a lot of um african friends from different parts of africa yeah. um so it's a place that i definitely want to visit but me my heritage is caribbean jamaican okay okay hence the afro fusion and yeah you know, hence the afro fusion <laughs> yeah because i do incorporate some some of our own kind of lingo and some of our own you know types of way of speaking with the patois and mixing it with the english with a bit of you know, African, I wouldn't say like a native tongue or anything like that, but, you know, just a little bit of uh, African flavor to it, definitely. But also, I mean, when, when, if we all think about it, the, um, you know, whether it's from the West Indies or North America, everyone one. came from, <laughs> came from exactly. the African continent. So, and, and a lot of the culture was taken and, and a lot of the music and, and, and things were, uh, were taken, but I guess I, I guess the question is then. Okay, so you move on to, into London, um, singing in self. How did that begin for you? So I started singing from, I would say like the tender age of five six. <laughs> um, I just always wanted to sing. I always sang in my home when everyone was around my house. You know, like at my mom's, uh, my dad had a lot of music industry friends and people like that. So any chance and opportunity I got to sing, they couldn't leave the house until I sang them a song. So <laughs> like my mom, and you know, I grew up in church and stuff and you know, I grew up with my gran um, who always brought me to church religiously. And from there, you know, my mom realized that it was a passion of mine. I didn't stop. I always sang to people, as I said previously. And um, from there, we just came, you know, my mom just came really developed off of that until I, you know, started to go to stage school. Um, we had to stop going to stage school because I couldn't, we couldn't afford it. It was something that we couldn't afford. So after, you know, I just kept singing and trying to find ways of being heard and seen. And in college, you know, we were spotted by a few labels. I joined a girl group. Um, that didn't work out because, you know, sometimes with the music industry, you know, it's it's not as easy to be, um, to get those opportunities. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. And that happened a few times throughout the years. And then, um, you know, 2016, I would say, it was just where it all kicked off for me professionally. Okay, okay. So we thought we just rushed straight into it and stuff like that. Yeah. But when you were was growing up and you were singing, who who were your inspirations and you know who 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 was my inspirations? Wow. So growing up in a household, first and foremost, like it always starts from church. But then after church it was um, you know, listening my mum was always listening to like dance hall in the mm -hmm. house. So it was heavy dance hall, but then like <laughs> With my dad, we had people like Jamiroquai in our home. Okay. Um, so it was like funk and all different types of genres of music. Yeah. And that was like a real eclectic blend of genres that I was exposed to from such a young age. And then when I grew up and discovered like music for myself, it was like Destiny's Child and Brandy and, you know, Beyonce. <laughs> I love Sade. Um, she's like one of my favorite vocalists. Um, so, and then obviously like Bob Marley and then like my reggae roots and it's very eclectic. And now it's even more broad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we uh, but then... <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm not trying to figure out the, so were you, when you're talking about Destiny Child, then we're looking at the 2000s is when you were getting into your own version of music, not yeah. the 90s. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Um, any, uh, any solo female artists that were around that you, 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 you also admired? Um, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, it was before my time, but it, you know, Sade, I do love Sade. Yeah, yeah, she's um, timeless. Pink was amazing. Pink yes. is amazing. Um, I Brandy mm, yeah. love like we call her like the female Bible. You know her vocal. <laughs> Brandy, Brand, Brandy is something else. She really is. Um, and that's just really to name a few. There is okay. I love Rihanna. You know I love Rihanna. Mm. Yeah. 
at any time then did you ever consider oh i'd love to be an artist oh i mean because i guess it'd be interesting to find out how it all started when you then thought oh okay i want to do this When did I start? Like when I knew? yeah because there is most of us i love music and, and listen to it but there was never a time i ever thought i would want to be a recording artist so i do wonder from you when it did that sort of click and change like you know what actually i think i may want to become an artist and, and pursue this Of course, I always knew because it was something that I, I always was very clear. I'm like, I'm a Virgo and okay we're very clear on what exactly it is that we want to do. I'm <laughs> very clear. And I've always known that I wanted to be an art, an artist um, because I always enjoyed performing in front of people and showcasing my talent, any opportunity that I got. So I knew that this, I knew music was always going to be my calling And I always knew that I wanted to be involved for the rest of my life when it comes to music. It's just within me. It's in my DNA. It's in my blood. I do it every single day. So I would say from the age of five was when I, from that young age, I knew I had that flair and that confidence that this is what I wanted to do. You know, as time goes on and as you get older, it, you, you, you start to realize and you start to have different feelings about music. that I still maintain that passion. Okay. So Yeah. you, you're talking about being in college, which uh, if you're in America, it, it's, um, it's just like, it's like, uh, yeah, it's high school. Yeah. Cause they, Yeah. yeah, it's just like high school. So around at that point in time, what was, what was in your mind about what to do? It was to try and get a record label deal. A record deal. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And I was, I was, <laughs> I was in college singing to every single person that I could come into contact with. And I would actually have this whole script and pitch of what I would say when I come into contact with anyone to the point where everyone was like, oh, there's that girl, there's that freestyler, there's that girl, there's that girl. And I kind of built like a little name for myself, which I was super proud of. And A name as in a nickname or, the, or a reputation that people Just a knew. reputation, yeah, just a reputation of just that girl who they was like, oh, she's that singer, she's that singer. And what I would do is, um, because I love different genres, I studied music as well. So I would hang out with the guys who was in the rock bands and then I would hang out with the people because I was like classically trained and then I would hang out with the people who did opera and then I'll hang out with the people who was like spitting and rapping and everything. So I would kind of like throw myself into different walks of life and different groups in college and create music with them. So I was known in every single group within the music community. Yeah, it was, it was a really good time. What were you studying? What music technology? Or what were you studying? Yeah, I was studying, I did first year music tech and that wasn't for me. So I did music performance. Okay, okay. And when you graduated, what did you end up doing when you finished college? When I finished college, I ended up working for a little bit. And um, then I was doing music. I just ended up just working and then I was just doing music and, you know, working in different studios, working with different producers. And then I was just like, yeah, the working thing is not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was always trying to find a way to get on in the music industry. And that was always a challenge. Uh, it wasn't easy. You Yeah, know? I mean, think about it. Um, on on well, yeah, as I said, um, a lot has changed, um, and and London itself and in the UK, it, it doesn't seem to have a strong urban market like you would get, say, in in America and, and stuff. You, we do have, you know, it's not choice anymore. It's capital and uh, and one extra and stuff to support. Mm -hmm. But when you think about labels, I don't know if there um, there's a lot for I think for, for grime and for for um, for the for I can't, for the those types of songs and music that 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 there seems to be a lot for there. Um, but for yourself now, because it, what's interesting, you're talking about working at studios and really really hustling. I mean, 
did you really see this coming or, or was this stuff that you just were hoping for because this you know to be able to put that determination and that that seems as if you really saw that like if i don't get it there was no plan b or so There's never been a plan B. And I was just having this conversation today because I had a session and I was uh, talking to someone on my team and I was like, you actually have to be really delusional and crazy to choose this path because there's no guarantee. Mm. And you have to have a, a level of um, faith that's unmatched because let's face it, you know, we're in the music business where one, it's not guarantee. Two, you don't even know where your income's coming from most of the time. And life can be lifing, you know? And Oh, oh that life can be lifing. yeah, life life will be life be really lifing. Oh, what And does that mean? <laughs> life is lifing, like, you know, we all have responsibilities, like Yeah, take yeah, yeah. away everything that's going on in the music industry. Like you have bills to pay. Hmm. have life like is this outside of the music industry you have to actually take care of yourself and when you don't know where that's coming from but you still have a level of faith you know it's it's um it's something that I can't explain but it's something within me that I know will happen for me and I tell you something I'm like a really like faith, like faith driven person. And I always see that God always puts these things before me, which lets me know that I'm on the right path. Like something could be happening. And I always see there's an opportunity that will come. And when I'm doubting myself, something will, uh, something will happen for me, which lets me know that all of this, what I'm doing is not in vain. And that's how I've always even though it, it, it takes a long and it doesn't happen overnight, I've always had a level of faith. And 2016 was when I realized like, okay, it's starting to happen. Okay, so uh, how how did you then, how did that, what was the sort of turning point then, that 2016? Sure, so 2016 was one of the most um, pivotal moments of my life. It's where I had, the worst that could possibly happen, just losing everything, becoming homeless, um, just really going through just real severe situations within my personal life to then actually going on a world tour and being an opening act for um, someone who we shared the same management team, which is Omi. He had a, a hit song uh, globally called Cheerleader, which I'll forever be grateful just for that opportunity to be a part of that camp. Um, so it was like number one on Billboard and I became an opening act for him. Oh, oh, okay. Now you, you, you've kind of jumped because one Yeah. minute you're working around studios and now I know. you're next year opening. So how did you even, How you did know, we get there, right? how did you, yeah, we need to get you. I know. It's, I have, I know I have such <laughs> a story. It's crazy. I hope you have all day. No, I'm joking. hey, Um, don't, <laughs> I'm a therapist, it, it so took, don't worry like, about it took it. a lot of years of just me just, being in studios and getting myself out there and making sure, you know, creating demos and, you know, just making people hear that. And, you know, we came across a, a guy who wanted to manage me at the time. And I was like very skeptical because it's the music industry and I didn't know him, but he just wanted to manage me. And I was like, okay, you don't know me, but fine. <laughs> and he was just like, you know, I, I would like to make you meet some people and, like fine and you know he said he he gave the speech as the music industry people do and he's like oh you're gonna meet somebody here anything he touches turns to gold and as I got into the studio it was Metropolis Studio at the time you know I met somebody who was managing um Omi at the time which is a specialist and um we got speaking and everything and just from there he was just like well, I've heard your music you know you're really good at what you do and we kept the rapport I wasn't looking for anyone to manage me at the time and then fast forward you know we were just speaking I was kept sending him records and um they invited me on tour they was like you know you're really talented and that's when I built a really good relationship with Omi who at the time had huge success so I you know was just so lucky
to be witnessing that, but at the same time was going through homelessness and domestic violence and those kind of things. So it was just very day and night. And um, went on tour and I never looked back since. You know, I learned, that's when I learned songwriting because, you know, Omi's a great songwriter. Okay. And in between that time, while I was on tour, I actually started to learn the craft of songwriting um, because I realized it was another avenue that I was interested in exploring. And from there, I just, you know, I went to, I went on a lot of different paths, but tour was amazing, traveled Asia, traveled the world. That was phenomenal. And then things kind of slowed down. And thank God I picked up the art of songwriting because, you know, money is not coming in mm. and things get hard. But whilst I was not putting out music and not doing anything as a, an artist, luckily I had the songwriting career that paid the bills. Okay. I mean, there's a, there's a number of things I wanted to touch on and that was um, because, you know, and I'm sure it has an uh, impact on, on your songwriting and your performance, but you mentioned about uh, growing up in London, move with, mm -hmm. your, with your family, then next minute, if you're still in London area, how did that, you know, how did being homeless when the family are there, how does that happen? Like, how did that actually happen? And you mean, like, what was the situation? I mean, people may think, okay, but you already have your, because you started off talking about a family and the house and the music yeah. and stuff. And then, mm -hmm. and unless you moved to Cambodia and now you, and you don't, yeah. it didn't work out, I can understand being homeless. But mm -hmm. I guess for us, the wondering, wow, how is it possible to be homeless when family's around? And it might mm -hmm. seem, you know, yeah. Well, I grew up, um, a single parent like you know after my dad left when we was really young okay. and um it was just me my mom and my brother until my mom had you know my other siblings and um we was in a you know a small a small house there wasn't enough room I went off um you know I eventually had my son I have a son and um we had gone through some experiences there hence why I'd moved out of my mom's home with my son but then once I had had some situations with my son and everything around that we became homeless so oh yeah wow mm -hmm. so at this point then are you I does does music seems the career seems so far away then never so even in the midst of this even having a son even in, you still think okay it's still gonna happen yeah, there was a period where I stopped because, you know, you have to provide. Yeah. But um, it's really weird because I've never really spoken about this, but I never stopped dreaming. And I remember, like, having my son and um, he was in the car seat and he was my audience. Mm -hmm. he, and I was still doing music through him. And I would sing to him and I would pretend that there was many people who I was singing to. Uh -huh. And um, I never stopped dreaming. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've never told that story, which is crazy. Yeah. No, and, I, and, and you know, you, we hear from those who are successful about, you know, visualization and, and, and really, because if you, can, if you can see it, you can yeah. feel it and, and you can achieve it. Um, so, but then if that means it's twice as hard because not only do you have to, you have a small, a son to, 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 to look after and hence when you're talking about bills and f money for food and stuff, how does that then impact, um, when you did meet Omi and, and the team and start to tour, did you take him with you and then? No, oh, I had the best mom ever. Like my mom was like, go live your dreams. Oh, oh, so mom was still... Yeah, so my mom's like there, but she just can't take on everything that I do. But yeah, she's there. Like I have the best mom. She's like, go and live your dreams. I want you to do this. And he would stay with my mom. Okay. And I was able to do, I'm very fortunate in that way. Yeah. I was able to do everything that I want to this day. Yeah. 
the um the other the other thing that we've um um and maybe now things are a lot better but you know it's still new the the industry especially for females and and um still very challenging even males not not i just just think anyone new trying to get in there's a sense of the wolves sniffing desperation and and putting up hurdles how did you decide once if you're going through this to be able to say okay i i have my vision and my dreams but then i also have um my sort of dignity as to how far uh, you know i'm i'm it's not at all of every cost to Mm -hmm. to hit that success how did you be able to manage and navigate around that i've always been a type of person where i march to the beat of my own drum i'm very secure of who i am um i've always been clear on my intentions and what it is that i'm trying to do and say i'm not easy to be steered left right and center so therefore i've always known what it is that i want and what it is that i don't want luckily i've always had really great people not yes yes men around me mm-hmm. um that will also advise me because i don't know it all mm-hmm. so therefore as an artist and as a woman mm-hmm. i am really clear on how I want to be seen. And if it doesn't feel right and it doesn't feel comfortable, I'm not going to do it. It doesn't matter how much money you pay me. I can't be brought. And I I, I make sure that I have my values. Mm. I make sure that I pray because <laughs> I'm like, my faith is everything to me. And I stick to that. And if it takes longer, then it takes longer. Mm. But it's worked for me. And, you know, I am respected in my communities because of the way I carry myself as well. And I'm very serious about my work. I get the job done. And those things help when it comes to how I'm being seen and not feeling like I have to sell myself short because I always believe that my work will speak for itself and people will respect me enough to give me what I want in the way that I feel suited. Yeah. Okay. And what about the, the, the business side of things now, you know, lots of people go in like, okay, I want to be on videos. I want to make music, but then mm-hmm. there's a business side that they, 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 they expect people, they trust people to look after them. And then they they find out later on that, that <laughs> they should have done their homework. Yeah, no. And Listen, this is the music industry, so I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, I've had it easy because I haven't. Because me, myself, I've gone through, you know, things that will, some people wouldn't even be able to handle, you know, in terms of the business side. And um, it's not easy. And I know that You have to be willing to, now that I've gone through those things, I tell you what it has done. It's helped me to understand business better. And I'm grateful to go through. Sometimes they say like, it's good to be going, it's good to go through the the negative experiences or these kind of experiences because with every negative, there's a positive. So yeah, with the business, it's not easy. You know, I've taken a lot of losses, but at the same time, I've always thought ahead and what can I do in case something doesn't work or when there isn't no money coming in, for example. Um, and I took the song route, the songwriting path, mm. in situations like that. Um, but there was times where, you know, I couldn't put out music and I had to just sit still as an uh, artist. Uh, now, when you listen to the stories from TLC, Tony Braxton, there's countless stories of those who have gone before who've talked about being taken advantage of and not signing and stuff. There then becomes an expectation that any new artist coming today would have heard the stories, would have read up on them, seen the videos, seen the interviews and thought, oh, I need to educate myself on these contracts and publishing and production deals and label deals. Um, was that something that you thought about when you got in or was it so much focused so much on actually becoming a recording artist that 
it's easy to just not really pay attention yeah. to the t oh wow yeah. and that's me being very honest like yeah, it's, yeah. Very, it's very easy to just be so infatuated with the dream mm -hmm. and especially with the music industry the way how sometimes people come at you uh and sell you mm -hmm. the dream and it, sometimes you're like oh they're family man they love <laughs> me you know and then you be like oh that that's my family you know and sometimes when you're in a certain vulnerable position and what feels like family you it's easy to get sidetracked and not look at the business because mm -hmm. You one, you see your dream in front of you, but two, you're around people who make you feel something that you yearn to feel in that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't judge anybody who's going through issues, but I do say that once you have gone through it, it is your responsibility to kind of like educate yourself. And yeah, me now, I'm that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. is a book that came out back in the 80s or 70s called how to make it how to understand the music business <laughs> it's surprising how many people don't read it but um it is it is a so so you, you, you so did it once you go on tour with omi uh, and and you're opening up for him um the guy who first met you and, and brings you into that camp does he officially become your manager and you're signing over a management contract and so he's the person you're trusting? Yeah. And and does he then get you, are you signed to a production deal labeled before they let you go on tour with them? Yeah, that's and what then, happened. And then are you also signing a publishing deal because they said, mm -hmm. oh, you can write so we can just, you know, make sure who you get your songs. And, and yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <Find> everything. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, did you sign a three sixty then? Because they uh, a three sixty. At the time, yes. At the time, okay. I did. Um, and 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 of course they didn't say, oh, find an independent lawyer to to help you look through the contracts to, uh, to I, very. Yes. Yes, and you know. When you don't really fully understand exactly, there's finding a lawyer, but there's also finding good no. lawyers. Yeah. Um, and even that within itself is like, no one really teaches you how to find a good lawyer and what mm. to look out for. So yeah, you could find the lawyer, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're really good or they have your best interest at heart. Yeah. So there's a lot that comes with the process. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, for me, I guess what's, you know, I, I ask these questions um, because it's it's been really hard. I've been doing this for um, three plus years, and everyone from SWV to mm -hmm. uh, Black Street to you know, I can't even, I'm, right now I'm drawing a blank. Total everything, and and all of them say this at one twelve. All of them, um, I when I interview them, same story, same sort of like, yeah, we didn't know we we, we came out the hood and. Um, the lawyer we got works for the and the label, and so they don't want to upset the label. So they'll just say, "Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It's standard. Mm -hmm. Everyone signs this." And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you're hearing what these guys experienced yeah. in the '90s, and but you never expect it to happen today. Um, and and also, what's upsetting is because in America, a lot of the black artists were the ones taken major advantage of. Those the 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 white recording artists were given the 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 actual the ABCs of what to do. So they were learning things and they actually got their stuff. So I and I always assume okay here in the UK you know, it'll be different. Mm -hmm. um, so to find out it's still happening even here uh, yeah. is it, quite disappointing. Everywhere around the world, this is happening. Yeah, but I you know I, I'm not going to hit Ed Sheeran or Chris Martin from Coldplay, or Adele saying the same stories, or Nita with, with Amy Winehouse, if she was still around, um, Lily Allen. They they weren't, they weren't saying these stories because it wasn't happening well, we, to them. Well, we don't know, though. Because um, not everything, not, every, not all of these stories are always publicised. Okay. And that, 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 there's a point there. So how was it then... Um, 
Can I, I take it you were doing little gigs and shows before you went on stage and on tour with Omi? <laughs> well, do you want to know the funny thing is, is that no, I really wasn't. I was, I really wasn't like in the, the gig circuit here. And that is what makes my story so bizarre, but yet so magical because my first actual show was in China. <laughs> which is like a you couldn't make this up in front of five thousand people wow um how does one sing in front of five thousand people if you've not singing sang in front of five people <laughs> <One doesn't. laughs> um what happened was all the practice in my kitchen i'm gonna be honest with you i had to literally pretend i was there and um I don't know. I, I tell you, that's why I always say music is definitely for me because you can't make this up. Like, how do we go from just not doing shows to doing it to going to China? But it worked out and it was a really good show. Was I nervous? Yes. Did I want to throw up? Yes. <laughs> did, did I doubt myself? Yes. But when I got on stage, I remember just 5,000 people chanting. I brought people on stage. You would think I had done it before. And I, I learned very quickly the art of being fit, stage presence and stamina, because I was out of breath, but they uh -huh. they wouldn't have known, but I was I was gasping for breath because I was just running up and down. It was a huge uh -huh. like an X Factor stage. <laughs> it was like an X Factor stage. So um yeah, and then I learned very quickly on tour that oh there's it's more than just getting up on stage and singing this is actual fitness mm. this is stage presence this is preparation this is your immune system because you're traveling from country to country this is like mm -hmm. I was, there was so much that I had to learn and that you would never think of when you say oh I want to be an artist you mm -hmm. don't think of things like that and that's not as glamorous as as no no not at all it was actually um there were times where we was just we was out of it we was tired you know imagine going from indonesia to singapore to singapore to china to japan like it was just india non-stop sometimes you don't know where you are you wake up you don't sleep properly you come off the plane you go to sound check you have two hours rest you go for a show two hours rest to the airport back to back wow and um, but in the in the midst of this, then are you? What about your your? Are you playing? Are you singing with a band, a live band, or is it backing track? Backing track. Okay. Back track. So we would actually like pre-record some of the backings and everything prior, and then just bring the backing track, and then we'll have like DJ PA like sets and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, after the, how long was the tour for? I toured from. 2016 to 2018. Well, wow, good two years. Yeah. And in on on while on the tour, you were learning how to songwrite. Yes. And were you then compiling um, compiling your your album together, or were you writing, put making songs for yourself, or what were you just doing with this uh, during that two years? At the time, I was just practicing. Because, you know, one thing my, my team always said is, you know, you must learn to write. And um, I said, OK, like, you know, having a student like Omi, I, I always say this, he's probably one of the best writers that I know. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best pop writers, just overall best writers. And um, I would just learn from him. And whilst we were on tour, we would just write songs and write songs. But little did I know these were, you know, songs that I were accumulating for myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't end up using, but it was just great practice. Mm -hmm. And um, fast forward in 2023 was when we actually, you know, wrote a song together called Witness. And um, it's doing really well right now. So it's a, it's a really great ballad, love, wedding type of song. And all that practice, all those years, you know, it, it came to fruition to 2023. So, but now here, you, you okay? We got you to 2018. Now we've got you to 2023. So, what we've looked at is five years. What were, you know? What the, was that? Yeah, what was happening within that five years? Then, um, after you've come out from the tour. 
so from after the tour, um, you know, things took a downward spiral. Um, yes, I was getting a lot of gigs writing and collaborating with a lot more artists and mm. that became my mainstream, that became my main career, that became the thing that I was doing full time. Mm. But, as, but as an artist, you know, that things were not happening for me, you know, I was not putting out music. There was just a lot of misunderstanding with the label and oh, were you, know, you officially signed to a label or were you just yeah. a okay yeah and you know what it's like within the music industry you know you have your moments where you're up you have your moments where you're down and that was my down period okay as an artist but as a as a songwriter paid the bills got some great gigs and that's what i was doing well, that's a, uh, and and you're saying that during that five years, there was never a time when you thought that this ain't happening. No. Okay. And I now, had people around me just like give up. I was like, no. <laughs> the the um, so manager who you first that got you introduced you to the camp was the manager, same manager that got you on the tour mm-hmm. and supporting you and stuff. Um. Some people might be watching this and thinking, wow, but at least if you tour for two years, man, you must have been, that's real income. That's real yep. money and stuff like that. So was yep. that a, was that a good enough to keep you for a good long time, the income from that? Yeah, I mean, um, the income from tour, you know, sustained myself for a little while. I mean, I live in London. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I live in London mm-hmm. and London is very expensive. So it didn't stretch and it didn't last for that long. And that's when I knew, okay, think you need, you need to think about other avenues. And that's where songwriting for me really helped. Yeah, I mean, but then I used writing and it was getting placed and your um the songs you're writing were they getting sung by other artists. Yeah, and ghostwriting gigs as well. Okay. Which is like a, an avenue that I, you know, heavily went down and that really worked for myself as well. Because at the time I was more thinking about just the finances and getting by. Yeah. So um, sometimes just waiting for cuts when you could have people that can just offer you, you know, cash up front and it's good cash as well. Yeah. It works. So at the come 2023 now uh, and also come to where you are now with, with, where you are with you know your, your single mm-hmm. are you still with the same manager label that you were when back in 2016 no no, no i'm not and you know just everything's good you know i'm so grateful one thing about me is like anyone who's helped me i'm like super grateful mm. so um although i'm not with the same management very grateful for what they've done for my career because i learned a lot and i had an amazing experience which most artists don't even get you know to go yeah. on a world tour so that's amazing um my current man- manager is ryan dylan um i'm signed to plum music which is just a phenomenal label phenomenal management team just since I've been working with him, it's just like music's just been coming out. The opportunities have been flooding in. It's just been an amazing experience. You know, I'm super grateful. So, and, and, and these questions are really for anyone who's watching, listening, upcoming new artists, trying to understand. Um, when you finished the tour and things were slow with the old management, did you, was it, was it, easy for you and the old manager to park companies and also to be able to come out of that 360 degree deal or did you have to wait a time frame before they allowed you to get out of it or no because it was just like a respectful you know mutual agreement just in terms of direction and Mm. where we, we both wanted to go um still to this day super grateful for everything that they did yeah. but the direction that I was going I, I I couldn't I couldn't sit down any longer and do anything yeah um and you know I had to put myself out there to get the attention of Ryan Dillon as well because you know he's not um just gonna pick me up and just be like okay here you go like I have to earn it and prove it and and that's what I did I put myself in rooms you know, I made demos again, made records, 
sat in rooms and sat with labels and sat with different people and the attention was starting to build up and then that's when me and Ryan started to work with each other and he was like you know I feel like you have something but I just loved what his vision was and we literally it's like we've known each other all our lives we just aligned with every single thing Mm -hmm. and that I have never experienced before and I knew it was magic because to this day, everything that we do, we just, we always execute. We always execute and we just have a vision and it's just like one team, one dream. We just go for it. And so what's his role? And I guess you say you're signed to Prime Music and I think some of us who are used to So So Deaf, um, signed to Jermaine So So Deaf and he's... (laughs) What's the, 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 oh, you know, signing to Bad Boy or signing to La Face Records? What's the situation, you know, for Plum Music and Ryan? How are they? Is it, does he, is he, is he Plum Music or mm-hmm. is he your manager? Then he's got you a deal at Plum Music or what's the. So Plum Music is a label. Okay. Um, it's an independent label. And mm-hmm. he also might like that's his. Label. Label. It's a team of, you know, um, execs over at Plum, which is really cool people and creatives. But he's actually directly my manager. Uh, okay. As well as part of the people that run the label. Of the, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And when they, by the time they said offer the contract and everything, and, you know, had you, what have you, had you, what had you learned from, your previous five, six years with the old manager and the team that you made sure that you were going to implement when you were signing with Ryan and and the label? Well, at the time, I wanted to make sure that I had something to manage um, because there's just no point anyone managing me and there's nothing to manage. Mm. So at that time, you know, we would start, I was starting to have conversations with like publishing um, companies like Warner. Okay and stuff like that who was showing some interest so you know I wanted to get somebody on board who could speak for me and handle my affairs but at the same time with everything with the music that I was creating and the things that I created for myself I knew that I was looking for more of a partner to take it to the next level Mm -hmm. so reading through the contracts it actually made sense that I started to partner with people who could actually elevate what I've done so far and the terms are fair between myself and them because at the same time it's a business and nobody wants to be working for free and I believe that everybody should be paid fairly Mm -hmm. and I also believe that if you even put in time you should be paid for that time Mm -hmm. because no one is obligated to help you you know so for me the contract just made full sense and that's what made me sign did you okay so I was, I was just trying to see the difference from the first time did you read the contract um uh, i was just so excited and I then did, now it's I like, did oh. read the contract but i'm being honest with you i didn't fully you know understand yeah you know um what was going on it was just like it was i don't know what was happening it was just like oh it was more of excitement <laughs> I'm going to wreck it too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to advise anyone yeah. to do that. Like, it's not smart. But with my team, it's like, this is what this means. There's a breakdown. There's wording. Uh, there's everything. Of, there's meanings. And that, hmm. to me, is just like, it doesn't get more clearer than that. Like, yeah. every time there's a, there's a meaning of what it means. So. Yeah. Well, no, which is good. And I think that's the what I was trying to get to is whether – there was more of a, okay, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to loot this study. It's, if I don't understand a word, I'm going to bring out a, a dictionary of the thoros. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and, and the fact that, you know, my team were like, take your time. Mm-hmm. You know, like, take your time. It's on your terms. Whatever yeah. you need, whatever, like, you do that. And I was just like, yeah, thank you. Okay. So now everything's signed up and stuff. What was the first thing that you guys started working on? Um, flew me out to America. Okay, was it the first uh, time? First time to Miami. No, it okay. actually wasn't the first 
Uh, no, it wasn't actually. I'd been to Miami before. Um, but first time officially working. Set up a whole camp for me, okay. which was a writing camp just to start working on my record with some amazing people at Plum House. Um, so that's oh, like, where are they are they are they based in the US or the UK? In the US. Oh, okay. so I got so I was flown out to Miami. Wow. And they just made me work with a bunch of creatives and really great people in America. And that was to start working on my music. And then the plan was to shoot two music videos and then just to start the ball rolling. And literally, we started, like, if we'd spoke January, we started in March. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. Best. I, I, I am so grateful for that experience just being in America and just we were just working non-stop back to back back to back found a single Ryan's like right gotta shoot your single gotta shoot your single like he's just very <laughs> he's like me he's ready to go he's ready to go anyone who knows him knows he's ready to go we gotta shoot your single gotta shoot your single and I was like okay and we did it and we just kept putting out music and he just built me he put these people together and we created this little fan base not fan base but we created a community in America mm. where I was like the English girl who's coming over and yeah, he yeah. created the whole thing you know and because he believed mm. he believed as much as I believed and to this day he still goes above and beyond wow so yeah uh, it's, it's amazing so we're now at present day so what uh, what do we expect so I know you've got the, the single that's out now that that's been What's the, oh, oh, is that another single coming out, then an EP, an album, or what's the the, the plan? Yeah, so we, I have another single coming out um, with Afro B. That's the next single. And I'm really excited about that because, you know, I collaborate with him. I, you know, he's got an album coming out and, you know, I've collaborated with him on that as well. Um, so that's super exciting. Really looking forward to that. And then it's like working uh, on the EP, which that is, makes me happy. <laughs> How many tracks on the EP? Okay, listen, right. I don't know yet because <laughs> I record a lot. Okay. So it's going to be really hard. I think I'm, I'm in like a thousand songs deep at the moment. <laughs> as okay. recording. Yeah, so, so it's hard to, it's hard to say. Okay, okay. I just record all the time. So the, um, What's the difference then recording in the States as because you've been doing it mostly here in the UK. So now you're in the States and recording. What's been the difference in their process of recording compared to when you were doing it here? Um, I would say in the States, I have. For me, I'm like a vibe person. So I go off vibe and energy. I, I freestyle. Most of my songs that you hear are all freestyles. Okay. So in the States, they adapt that. They adapt that that energy, that hunger. And here too, but in the States, I just worked with some people who just had that same kind of energy. But I can say to you that whilst I have been recording back here, because I I was more recording in the States and spending a lot of time out there, but now I've been back here, um, I realized when doing Afro beats and stuff like that here, it's just, it's very similar to the States. It's very vibey, it's free, it's freestyle, it's not too thought about. Whereas in other maybe genres, it's more we sit down, we write. So, but I mm. love them all. I love them all because I learn every I learn so much from every type of room that I'm in and work with different type of creatives. So yeah, but I love working. I love and Jamaica as well, because I've I've worked out there and it's just it's amazing it's a vibe okay so just as we as we finish up then it just to um you've got is do you have an official music video for your current single is it move move for me move for me do you still do you have an official music video for that or because i've no, seen a video of you standing with, with the, the mic. mic yeah that's just our visualizer we just wanted to do something fun um just something light but next single we'll have a a music video yeah okay now how or how does the promotion of music and now this is probably the more important part because back in the day 
the label will get it out, do some promo stuff and push it everywhere. Now that anyone can do it, you know, I can record a song now and just post, send it to Spotify and everywhere. And so it's hard to be discovered. How, you know, as a new artist in 2024, do you get discovered um, not by a label, but by your community when there's so much to choose from? Yeah, it's hard and you have to get really creative, but nothing beats speaking to people, as crazy as that sounds, nothing beats having direct communication. You can't just rely on the internet. There is nothing like using your phone, using your WhatsApp contacts, <laughs> using your Facebook Messenger, as crazy as that sounds, and having no shame in your game. Yes, we hire the PR companies. Yes, we do that. But believe it or not, I actually, with my team, spend hours, if not days, sitting there just speaking to people. I still, I do that because I actually want to build fans and people, real people. So that is a heavy part of how we promote. And it works. It really yeah. works. As much as, as long as like, you know, being very present on social media, creating TikTok campaigns and mm -hmm. all these challenges, great stuff. But just, I'm like also like a behind the scenes person where I'm like on the computer 24 seven, trying to find mm -hmm. ways of, be, of being created with my team. Me, my manager, especially. What about shows though, especially here in the UK? Uh, we're actually working on some shows. We haven't got any confirmed yet, but um, I would say yeah, definitely around like the second release with Afro B and EP time would when we'd be picking up some shows. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. when's the last time you were on stage and singing in front of people? Uh, last year in Miami. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that was really, really good. Has there been a difference singing with a live band compared to backing tracks? Actually, sorry, not even sorry to cut you, not Miami, in Jamaica, because we did a talent show with Omi, Rise okay. and Star. That was really good. And is there a difference between live and backing track? Yeah, for you. Um, yes, I think live, when you have like a live band, you get to feed off of, you know, everybody that's on stage back in track it's you have to be more creative you have to stand out more you have to demand more mm -hmm. but when there's a collective on stage and you have a band mm -hmm. you know i find it more easier to just freestyle and then also the band will shine but then we can go off and we'll just switch up a little bit more and it just brings a different element there's nothing like a live performance yeah back in track is safe yeah Okay, and so uh, what's their plans then? Is it to get you to, you know, to do more back and tracks because it's cheaper and easier to move around, or? No, I think my I well, you know, speaking with my team, especially my Ryan, we just want to start putting on some live shows, you know, put a live set together now, and you know, eventually take it on the road. That would be the plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Yeah, I mean that's definitely. As I said, it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's definitely. Um, but Ryan and his label, they've got a whole. They've got marketing. They've got PR. They're doing that, as you said. You're doing some of it as well. But yeah. the problem is that they've got a, a sort of a part of vision as to how well, they're they, gonna. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. I mean, it has definitely been um, it's been fascinating hearing um, hearing your your story and and stuff like that. Um, I guess one of the things that would, would then be if you were to think of five artists that if you um either that are out now mm -hmm. um that you would put in your top five of like really I like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um who would make those that top five? It could be male or female. Okay, so I would say Beyonce always. Oh no, okay, no, you have to take Beyonce out because Beyonce because she's like the goat. And yeah, you, you have to. Yeah, you have to take. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to, you have to, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You can't. Yeah, can't. Put I fear, love so. what she's. I, I swear, I always like. I just love her. Um, Omi, which is um, a brother of mine who I always respect, who's taught me a lot in the industry. So I will always put him up there. Um, I love like Rosalia. 
I love Rosalie. I think she's completely different. I love artists that are different. Um, there's another artist called Beam, who I heavily respect. He's a great songwriter who I work with. And um, I love his music. He's different. And myself. <laughs> yeah, you're so, why not you know if you don't big yourself up who else would <laughs> yeah. Yeah, myself. <laughs> yeah i mean the, you know when, when when you look at some somebody like tyler and you see how a song can just take off like that or uh, is it ck or is it cy i can't remember yeah how that's the that's the 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 benefit of the tiktok and and viral generation where we are now that you could have a track that just takes off but i what i think is i don't think they were chasing viral moments they were making music that went That's viral um and my i i would assume that as an artist you want to create music and hope it gets picked up like that as opposed to okay can we do a water type song <laughs> yeah, and then, no. I mean, what's for Tyler's for Tyler and shout out to her because she's doing amazing, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily for me, mm. you know, and I have been in the front seat to see what a hit record really can do to your, to somebody's life. Just watching someone like Omi have that globally, not in one territory, but globally. Mm. Um, and just kind of just being at, like behind the scenes watching that and like, oh, wow, this is what it can do. Okay, this is what one song. So, um, yeah, I'm not chasing that. Mm. But when it does happen, God willing, you know, oh my God, I mean, it'd be, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be a dream come true, of course. Yeah. Are you performing as well, though? Are you because you mentioned running around in China, not running around in China, but you talk about running around the stage like, <laughs> But now when you perform, do you have your two dancers and you have a sort of routine and stuff when you sing or what's the what's the deal? <laughs> well, I try to stick to the routine, but little miss me now always wants to go and do something more. Um, but yeah, I do. I have a routine. You know, I, I wouldn't say I'm like the best dancer in the whole world. Well, I thought I was, but my team was like, girl, you need to work on your routine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But um, yeah, that I want to heavily focus on more, just having like great, you know, routine, choreography um, and just being very tight, you know. So I'm definitely working on that. OK, OK. Well, you know what? I'm, I, um, uh, it, it's been a real pleasure uh, to, to talk to you, not just about you know the, the song and stuff, but really the, the journey that um, and really seeing you seen an artist at the beginning. Um, and you know, can't wait to see you really take it forward and stuff uh, because you've gone through a lot, and hopefully, that then becomes evidence in the success at the end uh, uh, of things. Um, so we've got a EP out in a couple of um, hopefully before by the end of summer. So next yeah. single coming out, are we talking May June? June, yeah, June. Like in June, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll be sure to make sure that um, we get your your socials and and and. Uh, but for anyone that's trying to follow you, what, yeah, sure. If you are trying to follow me, please make sure that you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, and it's L A H R E L Music. That's one word, Laurel Music. Across the board, you can find me. Yes, and so and hopefully we'll see a new video of the new single when 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 it comes out and yeah. and see you put those moves in in in. <laughs> and see the moves come together. <laughs> see the moves come together. And yeah. thank you as well. Like you're amazing. You're really like you made me feel calm and really good. And yeah, you're really good interviewer. So thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. Oh goodness, no, I, I appreciate the time you took. Um, I work in cams. Um, I don't know if you know CAMS is the Children's Mental Health Service for the NHS. So, yeah. as a counselor, a therapist. So, um, but I love the stories, and, and I always, I, I, I prefer the life stories than the, you know, if I say, oh, who produced the track and how the 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 vocals, and the, you know, the stories like you shared today has been really fascinating, and the hope is that somebody watches this and listens who's probably trying to start or who felt hurt 
and want to give up and then think actually you know it's, she went through it and look where she's at maybe i can keep persevering and that's that's the hope what my whole hope is to capture from these interviews so i really appreciate you being open and honest and 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 and, and as transparent as possible as well Thank you so much. And thank you for having me once again. Yeah, so sorry for keeping you up this late. I say most of the time, everyone's in the States, so it's like five in the evening, and so it's, it's a lot easier for them. But um, yeah, but I appreciate it. And hopefully, as you know, maybe I'll talk to Jay when, you know, things, you know, Yes. next video's out and it's going out, we we, we may bring you back in, may actually try and get I would you love to that. to do a little live singing on it and, and, and stuff. And so just Yeah. to, as you promote it. Of course. Definitely. Anytime. Okay. Anytime. Well, I appreciate it. So, well, yeah, I well, can't wait to hear the new single um, and video and promote and support and everything. Yes. Thank you so much. God You're bless. welcome. Take care. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate um, um Laurel for for the interview um and I, you know listening to her story listening to her journey listening to what she's experienced that's been great wow you know and a lot of us will start thinking you know what happened in the 80s and 70s and the 90s um no longer happens but to find out that you know it's still happening because you know but she's learned from that and she's in a better place so I appreciate you guys watching and when you know when her single and video comes out we're going to try and put it, bring her back in maybe get her to do some live singing stuff but it's been fascinating and it's been great and I appreciate everyone and